In today's tutorial on industrial instrumentation, we will talk about pressure measurement part 2 manometers. The topics that we will discuss here are manometers and is 6 different types. Those are YouTube manometers, well time manometer, barometer, inclined manometer, micro manometer and brick balance manometer. A manometer which is also known as a weight meter is a simple device that is used to measure both the absolute pressure and the differential pressure. In its simplest form it comes in the shape of a U-tube and contains liquids of known density. It works on the simple principle that the differential pressure is displayed as the height difference between the two limbs of the manometer. The manometer caters in the range of medium pressure of 1 millibar to 1.5 bar or 100 pascal to 150,000 pascal or 0.001 atmospheric pressure to 1.5 atmospheric pressure. The unit that is used in manometer based measurements is centimeter or inch. One atmospheric pressure is equal to 76 centimeter of mercury or 14.7 psi or 101.3 kilopascal. One centimeter of mercury is equal to one triple three point two two pascal and one pascal is equal to zero point zero 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 seven five centimeter of mercury. The liquids that are commonly used in manometers are water of density one thousand kilogram per cubic meter, oil, specifically red oil of density varying between eight hundred to nine fifty kilogram per meter cube and mercury of density 13,560 kg per meter cube. The principle of the manometer is that the pressure to be measured is applied to one side of the tube producing a movement of liquid in the other or both the limbs as shown in the figure below. The applied pressure in the manometer is given as P equal to rho GH. The difference in the height between the two vertical limbs of the manometer indicates the pressure difference thus the pressure measured is given as del p equal to rho m minus rho f hg where rho m is the density of manometer mercury and rho f is the density of the transmitting fluid the fluid density plays a vital role in the operating range of the manometer here both the tubes or limbs act as pressure ports when both the ports are connected to two different pressure elements, the manometer acts as a differential pressure meter. When one port is connected to the pressure element and the other is open to the atmosphere, the manometer acts as an absolute or gauge pressure meter. Based on the shape and construct of the manometer, there can be several types of manometers which are U2 manometer, differential U2 manometer, inverted U2 manometer, inclined manometer, micro manometer, well time manometer and ring balance manometer. The U2 manometer is the simplest and easy design tube in the form of a U. Here one limb is connected to the pressure terminal while the other limb is open to the atmospheric pressure. The U2 manometer acts as a gauge pressure meter as it measures the atmospheric gauge pressure as compared to the known pressure gauge at the other terminal. The equation for the pressure determination is given as del P equal to rho m minus rho f hg where rho m is the density of mercury in manometer and rho f is the density of the transmitting fluid. The differential U2 manometer is similar in construction to that of a normal U2 manometer. Here, both the limbs of the U-tube are connected to two different and separate pressure gauges and one gauge is compared against the other which is a known pressure. Thus, as the name indicates, it measures the differential pressure between two pressure points. The equation to determine the differential pressure is given as del P equal to rho m minus rho f hg where rho m is the density of mercury and rho f is the density of the transmitting fluid. The inverted U2 manometer is also similar in construction like that of a U2 manometer but here the tube is placed inverted with the manometer fluid being trapped between two separate fluid pressures under measurement. This inverted U2 manometer is more accurate than the regular U2 manometers as it is capable of measuring very low range differential pressure in liquids. The pressure differential between the tube limbs is given as P1 minus rho 1 GH1 minus rho M G H1 minus H2 
equal to P2 minus rho 2 GH2. The equation to measure the differential pressure is given as del P equal to rho 1 GH1 plus rho 2 GH2 minus rho mg H1 minus H2. The inclined tube manometers are different from the regular U2 manometers and here the base of the tube is much elongated. The inclined limb with a known degree of inclination theta acts as the indicator limb while the other limb acts as a reservoir with a greater cross-sectional base area. These inclined manometers can measure very low differential pressure. The inclination improves both the resolution and the accuracy of the meter. The differential meter reading is more illustrative and stretched in this case compared to the regular YouTube. The inclined manometer produces a large liquid movement relative to the YouTube's graduations. However, the rate of response is slower than the normal YouTube manometer. The differential pressure equation is given as del P equal to rho G x plus y equal to rho g d into a2 by a1 plus sin theta as y equal to d sin theta and a1 x equal to a2 d as illustrated in the figure below. The micrometer is a special manometer which is little bit similar in construction to the inclined manometer. It is capable of measuring very small liquid differential pressure with better accuracy and resolution than the YouTube manometers. Here, one limb is inclined by an angle theta forming the measuring limb and the other limb has a reservoir-like section with increased cross-sectional area as shown in the figure. The equation to determine the differential pressure is given as del P equal to P2 minus P1 equal to rho G H2 minus H1 equal to rho g into L sin theta minus h1 where theta is the angle of inclination. The well type manometer is similar to a U2 manometer with the difference that one of the limbs form a well like structure with a much larger cross sectional area. The ratio of the limb area is normally 100 is to 1. When a force or pressure for that matter is applied on the reservoir limb, the same force is reflected as a significantly large pressure in the capillary limb. This amplified pressure in the capillary limb is useful in providing a large metering scale, better accuracy and higher resolution. The well type manometer is generally used for measuring absolute pressure given as del P equal to P1 minus P2 equal to rho GH. If only A2 by A1 value is too small. The ring balance manometer is not exactly a manometer but closely acts like one. The tube is made of polythene or other transparent material. It is bent in the form of a ring supported at the center with a pivot. The tube channel is divided into two segments by spilling, sealing and filling with suitable light liquid namely kerosene or paraffin oil. The two flexible tubings acting as pressure tabs P1 and P2 operate against the sealed walls and the ring rotates to balance the counterweight G. The calibration of the ring balance is obtained by means of the balancing weight G. The differential pressure is indicated by the positioning of the partitioning wall A and S is the flexible tubing distance indicating the positive and the negative differential pressure applied to the ring body. And R is the radial distance. The differential pressure is determined by the following equation del P equal to P1 minus P2 equal to G into S by A into R sin alpha where alpha is the angle of tilt of the ring balance manometer. Parameter is an instrument to measure air or atmospheric pressure in open air conditions. The average air pressure is between 940 and 1040 millibar. The barometer shown here is a traditional torticellian barometer. A U-tube filled with mercury is placed inverted on top of a mercury bath. The air pressure pushes down on the bath and mercury is lowered in the tube to balance the pressure. The mercury raised in the tube is indicative of the air pressure. The greater is the air pressure, the 
mercury level will rise more in the tube. The mean average air pressure on a normal day is 760 mm of mercury. The equation to determine the atmospheric pressure is given as PATM equal to rho HG GH. We use both mercury and water as manometer liquid. But mercury is preferred over water for the following reasons. Mercury does not stick to the body of the capillary tube and therefore it offers less parallax error. The higher density of the mercury is helpful in providing a smaller and more compact size. Mercury is opaque and therefore gives better readability. Mercury has way lower and higher freezing and boiling points respectively and therefore the temperature operational range is much higher. However, water manometer offers better resolution due to much elongated tube size. There are three major error sources in manometer and they are the liquid density changes with temperature and therefore results get altered. Due to the high capillary column, there are significant parallax error. The meniscus variations contribute significantly in inaccuracies of the reading. The salient advantages of a manometer are its simple design and it is tested over time. It offers high accuracy and good sensitivity. It operates on a wide pressure range. The cost of the meter is reasonable and it is well suited to measure both low, absolute and differential pressure. The following are few of the limitations of a manometer. The manometers are generally large and bulky. For proper indication, they require external leveling and marking. There should be a significant compatibility between the manometer fluid and the measured fluid. There is no overrange protection in manometer. Condensation is a potential problem. For further reading, the viewers can refer to the following references and links. Thank you.